Yeah, amen. Good to see everyone uh, this midweek. I know the sky is pretty gloomy, but, you know, we have to keep the sun. That is the Lord shining in our heart. Yes. And continue to guide our feet as we walk this road, this path that we all have to trust down here. You know, uh, the devil is very busy. And we're, we're aware of the devil, but... We we are mm-hmm. we're really we're, we're we're really you know if we knew some things we really would know how diabolical he is you know how how deceitful and disastrous he is if many people could see uh, the devil and know how he really was and how he really is it'd be full of him but you know people seem to play with their souls and play with their lives like they got all kinds of time uh, to make it. Uh, into heaven but when the Lord says that time is over then we have to uh, give up the ghost and we have no control of when that time is going to be so we have to be ready and I thought it would be nice tonight to to teach from God's word from from my heart because your eyes have to see a lot of things and you have to be willing to you have to be able to understand what you see. If your eyes see something, then your, your mind says something. There's something you saw. is something about what you saw. And you see it too many times. Your mind got to say, maybe something is, something, that is something, there's something wrong with that. Or something is wrong with that. You see something that's, you see a male, you see a male person, and I'm not going to preach about that. You see a male person, and, uh, and you see a, a female person. They both are, are different, you know. You see the sun and you see the night. They both are different. Those are simple things. You see the rain and you see, uh, you, you feel the wind blowing. You know, you're able to tell the difference between that. And when we cannot tell the difference between those things, then there's something wrong with us, our inner man, our conscience. So we have to be able to be able to see those things. And the Bible, I believe, is 100% accurate. I don't believe that there's any. Anything wrong with the Bible, any faults in the Bible, I believe it's 100% accurate. It's something, there's something in the Bible here that I want you to see, Isaiah 34 and 16, about the Word of God and about this book right here, what it tells us to do. It tells us in verse 16, it says, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. See, that's why I believe it, 100%. He says, No one of these shall fail fail he says <clears throat> none shall want her mate for my mouth it had commanded and his spirit it had gathered them and he had cast the lots from them and his mm-hmm. and his hand had divided it divided it unto them by line they shall possess it forever from generation to generation shall they dwell therein so the Bible is not going to fail because the Lord has already proclaimed it and he said so with his mouth that it is not going to fail. Look at the 28th chapter. Look at the 28th chapter. We have to be able to compile and understand how it is that we are to understand this book. The 28th chapter, verse 10 says, look at verse number, number 9. Whom shall teach knowledge, and who shall make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk, and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept. It says line, precept upon, I mean line upon line, and line upon line, here a little, and there a little. So the Bible says that we have to be able to understand how to Understand this book, precept upon precept, line upon line. So there's no reason to make it difficult because it answers the questions to us of things that are going on today if we understand. Now, can you, can you watch the news tonight and we have to depend on the man who on the news tells us about the weather so we can prepare for the next day? You know, a lot of times I get up in the morning, I look at the, at the, at the 
But the phone, I want to know what the weather is in Dallas. Because maybe I'm going to Dallas. Because it may be cooler in Dallas. And it's down here. So you depend on the weather, man. And so if he says it's going to be sunshine. And you walk out and it's cloudy. Well, you kind of not. You kind of don't depend on the weather, man, too much. He's kind of. He's kind of. He's not very accurate in telling the weather if it's cloudy that day or if it rains, because he missed the mark that day. It happens. It happens. But you know, we should be able to walk outside and see it for ourselves. Just like I opened up and said, "Oh, it looks like rain." Maybe I put some long pants on, not some shorts on. You know, you know that it gets cooler in Dallas than it is down here. So I went to Dallas one day, and um, uh, this particular day I had some shorts on. And that was yesterday, matter of fact, and it was nice. Overcloud, it wasn't hot. It was backed up, and they loaded the truck up. I went to sleep. I woke up. It was freezing. When the rain was coming in the windows, I had the windows down. So <clears throat> unexpected for me. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't expect it to rain. I knew it was going to rain in Houston, but I didn't know it was going to rain in Dallas. So, so, but, but, knowing that I can look and I can tell in, some, in a sense that, you know, I just should have put some pants on, some long pants on, have some in the back of the truck so I can, so I can put those on just in case. But we can discern certain things for ourselves. Look at Matthew. Look at Matthew. Look at Matthew 16. God gives us a sense that we can look and we can tell that something is coming. We can tell when something is coming. There's an intuition in us that's in us that we can tell something, something's just not right. Something's going on. Look at, look at uh, verse number one. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempted and desi tempting desiring him that he would show them a sign from heaven. So they're looking for a sign from heaven. Physical sign. The Pharisees and Sadducees. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say. Now, these men are obviously trying to trick the Lord up. He said, they say. He said, it will be, it will be fair weather. For the sky is red. See, so, you know, they said that. Now, evil or good can determine when something's coming in the weather. Something's coming in the weather. You see leaves all of a sudden blowing. You know, one day I was riding down the freeway, and the weather was nice, and I rode, I rode to like a little windstorm, blew the whole truck. I said, oh, my God, this one is going to get kind of shaky on this side of town, you know. It's, just, it's common sense. It's just common sense. It said, he answered and said unto them, when in this evening you say it will be fair weather for the sky's red. And in the morning, it will be, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye, but can ye not discern the sign of the times? So I think I've set up enough to where we want to, I want to kind of jump right here. Can we discern the sign of the times? Can you and I do that? And if we understand the sign of the times, this is where we need to be. We need to be here. We need to be worshiping and fellowshipping with saints, doing that which is right. And if we're ever anywhere else, we need to be living right. We need to be living right. Because let's look at Matthew, the 24th chapter. Jesus' disciples, they ask him a question. You know, when is the sign of the man, of, of the coming of the Lord? And this is what this is what our duty is to show people what the gospel is, because the Lord is coming back. It's plain. He said he's coming back in the clouds. That's what he said. He said he's coming back with some angels, and he said he's going to take vengeance on those that know not the gospel. And so that's what we teach. We teach the gospel. Matthew twenty four and one, the Bible says, Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him. For to show him the building of the temple. Jesus said unto them, Say ye not, all, see ye not all these things. Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat down, 
And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came, came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of the coming of the end of the world? So here's a sign. Here's a sign the disciples want to know. What is the sign? What sign? Can you see? Can I see? Can you see? I see a lot. I see that we don't know when Jesus is coming back. No man can predict that. No man can predict that. Well, let me tell you that men are, men are just as wicked as they were in the beginning when the great flood came. They're wicked. If I told you, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna put a put a scenario out. Let's put a scenario out. Don't have to be true. It could just be something that I'm saying. But if you went, if you worked, when you went and worked hard and saved all your money up, right? If you went and saved all your money up, and you've been working, you you had the car on your refrigerator that you won. You had a picture of it. I want that car. I'm gonna work hard for it. I'm gonna save the money up, and I'm gonna go pay cash for it. And you do it. You know, you go buy that car. Now, now the Lord said that we ain't gonna, we're not gonna take nothing out of this world. We we, not, we understand that. We just borrow. We just borrow, borrow. We borrow, We living on borrowed time. We don't we don't own nothing. We can't take it with us. Some people think they can. But while you're here, you believe that when you save the money up. Right? And you go to the dealership, you talk to a real person, the person is real, the car is real, you pay for the car, make the deal, and you get home, but you find that the car really not yours. You just spent your money. Would you be mad? Would you be mad? I guarantee everybody else would be mad. I'm going to tell y'all something afterwards. Not all you, not everybody. I'm going to tell you something afterwards. See, this is the thing, some things we don't know about. That's why that we can't worry about it. We can't worry about it. I was reading the Romans 13. I read Romans 13 because I was, I was a little bit, I was thinking about, man, should I worry about all these things that are happening? All these, you know, these, all, these pol all this violence going on, the police going on, you know, beating up people, killing people, you know. And I, you know, my mind just thinks, it just thinks. There is a root problem. Behind everything, is a root problem. What is the root problem? Well, we know the devil goes in and out. He goes in and out. And the Lord said in Isaiah 47, 45, and 7, that evil was created by him and good was created by him. But it's good. And, and evil is a test for us. It's a test. It is a test for us. But when you see all these things happening, you see, I mean, is that a sign? These, these things are happening. I know we know it's the devil. We know it's the devil. But we know there's another thing. And the Bible says the love of money or the lust of it is the root of all evil. And I said, that's the root right there. It's the love of money. That is it right there. That's why these things are happening. It's all about money. It's, some, it's something going on that you and I can't see. But the thing about it is, I heard a brother preach a message one time, and the message was wonderful. To me, it was it was like light just went off. And I heard the sister st stand up this Sunday. She said that, you know, she gets mad with people sometimes when she tries to avenge them. And she's working on it because she said she's working on it. Praise the Lord. But, you know, somebody said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. I will repay. And he will, because I don't care how bad you think you are. You'll be the baddest, biggest, baddest dude in the world. But Hebrews 9 and 27 going to get you. Because that appointment, you're not going to miss it. And so this preacher said, he said, he preached a message. He said, he said, death is a great equalizer. It's a great equalizer because everybody got to go there. Everybody got to go. And Revelation 20 and 12 says that. The great and the small are going to stand before God to be judged. And so, our tormentors, whoever they are, whatever's going on behind the scenes, they're going to die. Just like we're going to die. And we're going to stand there, they're going to be getting judged. 
I want to, sometimes I think, is it going to be a big movie screen there showing everybody's faults? Is it going to be, I think Daniel talks about that some people are going to be shamed. I read it in Daniel. And so, if you don't repent, maybe the Lord going to shame you. He's going to show, show some people some stuff. Show some people, people some stuff. So, I've seen a lot. But, I'm looking at, I'm looking at not trying to get mad at what's going on, but try in order to, mm-hmm. to live peaceable with all men as best as I can, no matter what's happening. Because I know that Romans 13 says that, that uh, those people that are in authority, he said, that they're, they're not a terror to good works. He said, not a terror to good works. He said, they're, they're ordained by God. So God has preordained them to do what they're doing. And so it's best for them to, to do their job the way it should be done and be a just officer like this brother in here who's in here tonight. A just that works in authority, a just man working and understanding his job. And so, right here, he says, What is the coming of the end of the world? Verse 4 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. That no man deceive you. Lots of people are leaving the church of Christ. They're leaving the church of Christ. Some of them are still in the building, but their, their minds and their hearts are gone. They left the church of Christ. Just want to be around Christians, because it's safe right here. I'm safe around y'all. I'm like a fool. I'm going to be a deceiver, but I'm, I'm going to stay around y'all. You know, they want to stay right here. They may preach. They might say one thing here and live another way out there. So can't do it. So he said, don't let them deceive you. Don't let them deceive you. Um, verse 5 says, For many shall come in, in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. How can anybody read this book, this book, and get it wrong? Now, this is the Bible. This is the Bible. There's no mistake. This is not, this is not the Apocrypha. This is the Bible. It's not the Apocrypha. It's not the Quran. It's the Bible. It's not any other book. Not the book of Barak. One of the prop it is the Bible. That's what it is, the Bible. No other book. No other book. I, I sometimes worry about and I think I don't think it's it's wrong to worry about because we all have children. Some of us are gonna have grandchildren. I'm not worried about my children sometimes. And I remember one man who got up early one morning, at least it's recorded in the Bible. He got up and he prayed for all his children. Or what may have been in the evening. It was Joe. And you know, his friends, they were out. I mean, they were out. The, all the, the boys were out with the girls. Their family, they were out having a good time eating and drinking. He got up and made sacrifice because he said maybe they've sinned. Maybe they've sinned. And so, you know, I pray for mine. You know, being a parent is... What I, well, you know, you know, when you're not a parent, you don't worry about. It. When you're a parent, yeah, you pray for you, you pray for your kids. You worry about your kids. You want them to be safe. You want them to be protected. You don't want any harm to come to them. And so, you think if the Lord is coming back, you know, we don't know when. But they could live to just be old as we are, and we could be gone. They could live, and the Lord still may not come back. Still may not, come, still may wait, you know, until they're old and gray. Still, we don't know. But you still worry. But you know, my thing is this right here is that you want them to live and have a good life too. You know, you want them to have things. You want them to, to be able to uh, achieve a certain amount of success in life. You know, without the danger of any crazy person coming in and shooting up everything. Because that's what's happening now. And you know, you know, so so those are things you pray that don't happen. But it's a sign of the time. You see all this crazy stuff happening. But, you know, to me, and it's just me, it's just me, I don't think there's that many crazy people in the world. I think that there are some crazy people in the world that act out. But, you know, I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm going to say that for another day afterwards. And I may be getting into another area right there. So verse 5 says, Many shall come in the name of, and say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You know, our brethren, our brethren, the Bible says the, the, lust, the lust of money is the root of all evil. 
It, it's not just the people on the outside that are trying to use us. The ones on the inside. Because some love money, some love power. They do. They do. They love power. And, uh, you know, you just have to be able to have an advocate. You have to have an advocate when something like that happens. You really do. Because the Lord knows your heart. And Lord, the Lord always will send you some relief in the time that you need it. But, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about we forget sometimes. That's why I think the Lord set it up that we come on the first day of the week, and then we have an opportunity to come on Wednesday. Because we'll forget. We'll forget because if you say, no, I won't forget, well, the children of Israel forgot. Mm -hmm. They forgot. As soon as they came across the Jordan, and they fought, and, and they're supposed to go back, they're supposed to go clean up. They were supposed to go clean up Canaan land, but they didn't. Not all of them killed everybody. And some of them, some of them, some of them saved some of them and started living, started living around them, around them in certain areas. And the Lord raised them same old Canaanites up and turned them against his own people because they were supposed to kill them. The book of Judges 1, 2, and 3. Yes, sir. 1, 2, and 3. And so, and so therefore, we got to make sure that we come and be a part of the worship service and make sure we come and study God's word or study where we at. Look at the book of um, Nehemiah. I just want to go there for a minute. Nehemiah 5. Nehemiah 5. We shouldn't worry about physical stuff that we have. But I can't go to work without a car. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't I can't ride no bicycle to work. That's a long way for me to be riding a bicycle. I mean I could. I could. You can put them on the front of the buses now. But they don't bus run in front of where I work. You know, I mean where I go, you know, to start my job at every night. So I need a car. So I need to have a job. I need to have a job. Now, is it wrong for a Christian to want a job? No. You gotta have a job. Because you gotta have a house to stay. And Peter said, Paul said, don't even mess with nobody who don't want to work. Don't even go out and sit down and eat with them. So working is something that we have to do. We have to do that. Because we got bills that come, we gotta pay them. So so we need we need shelter, we need food, we need to have a place to stay. And until our children get their place to stay, they need to stay with us. So they get themselves on, the, on, on, on their feet, you know, and that's what we try to do. We try to we try to mimic how how you have to you know get out and, and work. We try to mimic that to our children, so they'll take it. They'll say, okay, and he get up, he go to work, he get up, he go to work. So I'm telling you, so one time it was, it was a time in my life where I slept all day. And I, I didn't. I lost some jobs because I was sleeping, staying home with the parents. But you know, when the little babies started coming in the world, they started crying. Wah! You got to get up. You got to get up. You gotta get up every day, man. You got to get up. Get up 2 o'clock in the morning. Don't want to get up. Gotta get up. Fight yourself and go to the sink. Start washing your face. Right, go put some coffee on. Get in that thing going down the road. You got to do it. You got to do it. So, 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 but the thing about it is things do happen, but you don't want people to take advantage of you. You don't. You always want people to be fair with you because you want somebody to treat you like you would treat them. As Matthew 22 says, you know, love God, love your neighbor. And those that don't love you, they're not going to treat you. They're not going to treat you right. They're not going to treat you right. They're not your neighbors. Uh, so, verse 1 says, Nehemiah 5 and 1 says, And there was a great crop of the people and of their wives against their brothers, brethren the Jews. You know, I always see on the news when something happens to a child in a family, I always see the, I always see the mother talking. The man, he'd be sitting back there like his hip. Because y'all have something to say. Y'all have something to say. Y'all gonna cry. Y'all gonna express emotion. And, you know, we'll do the same thing too. But y'all gonna get a point across. I'm telling you right now, you're gonna get a point across. It's gonna happen. And say so, and so, for there were, for there were, they said, we, our sons and our daughters are many. Therefore, we take up corn for them, that we may eat and live. Verse 3 says, Some also there were that said, We have mortgaged our land, vineyards, and houses, 
that we might buy corn because of the dearth. Of course, now that was that was a drought. There was something going on at the time where things got kind of tight. People had houses. They had mortgages. They had to pay. That's what the Bible says. You know what the word mortgage means? It means death pledge. It means that you're gonna pay for it. To, you're gonna pay for it to you. To, you're gonna pay that debt till you die. Death pledge. That's what it means. Not unless you got cash. But let me tell you. Let me tell you a little secret. I was reading the book. I was reading the book, and not only that, reading the book, looking at a whole bunch of YouTube. I love YouTube, man. That's a blessing from blessing from the Lord. I'm gonna tell you right now. You find a lot of stuff out on that. And um, I was re I was reading. And I was and I was reading. I was re if, I, if I look at YouTube, I'm reading too. So the same thing. And in the book, it tells how how the bank works, how the banks work. And I just I might as well put it on here. It's on YouTube. There's something right here too. So y'all know we need to get educated because we ought to know. As soon as you buy your house, it's paid for. Pay for. As soon as you walk out. The sign the paper, the ink still wet. The house is paid for. Bank got their money. Mm, that's right. They got their money. That's a whole bunch of things going with the bank. I'm gonna tell you right now, that's not right. But if me and you did it, we'd be in jail. Mm. I'll just tell you like that there. Mm. So, 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 in 90 days, in 90 days, in 90 days, you know, foreclosing house in 90 days. 91st day, then. Mr. Henson, you gotta get out of that house. <laughs> Gotta go. Foreclosure. But you know, the ninety day calls the ninety day triggers something in your in your in your in your agreement. That is that the insurance company pays that house off again. And they got paid again for the house. Foreclosure means they trying to steal it now from you. They got paid twice. So right here, right here. They're trying to steal their brother in town to take their houses and their mortgage. Their brother in. My gosh. It's not one thing for the man, the Gentile, to do it, but your own brother in? My God. So, this will happen. This will happen to us. So, so he says, verse 4. There were also that said, we have borrowed money from the king's tribute and that upon our land and our vineyards, yet none of our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren. Our children and their children, and lo, we bring unto bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants, and some of our daughters to be bought unto bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them for other men have our land and vineyards. And it's sad. He says, verse 6 says, Now this is Nehemiah. What can Nehemiah, Nehemiah is going to say? I was very angry with them with, when I heard their cry and their words. And that's how we should be. We should be angry when we hear brethren crying because somebody got their mortgage. Your brother won't, won't let you have your house because you owe them money. Man, you won't buy you another house. Get in the house. Pay you another house. You get another house. Certainly you never got paid for it. It says, Then I consulted with myself, and I rebuked the nobles and the rulers, and said unto them, Ye exact usury. That's another thing. That's another thing. Usury. Interest. Interest. <laughs> they get their interest up front. Uh, you paying them there, they got theirs up front. The banks, yeah. They got the interest up front. 30 years, you're going to be paying them, they got theirs up front. Somebody, somebody ought to be angry with that. But you can't be angry, that's the way they do it. But if you and I did it, we'd be in jail. Now, keep, keep in mind now. God is good. He just reveals stuff to us so we can understand. Every one of his brethren, I said, I said a great assembly against them. He said, and I said unto them, we after all, we after our ability have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, which were sold unto the heathens. And will, will ye even sell your brethren? Lord have mercy. Or shall they be sold unto us? 
Then held they their peace and found nothing to answer. At least they still had a conscience. Because you can't answer with that kind of rebuke. You, you don't sell your brother? You got to be kidding me. And so, and so Nehemiah rebukes them, he said. He had no answer. Verse number nine says, Also I said, It is not good that you do, that you do, that you do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathens and enemy? I likewise and my brethren and my servants might exact of them money and corn. I pray ye, let us leave off this usury. Restore, I pray you, to them, even this day, their land, their vineyards, their olive, their olive yards, their houses, also the hundredth part of the money, and of the corn, the wine, and the oil, that ye exact of them. The Bible says, verse 12, Then they said, We will restore them, and we will requite nothing of them. So we will do as they as they say it. Then I called the priest and took an oath of them that they come do according to this promise. So so they had an advocate. And these brothers still had consciences. They still had consciences. But can you do that to the man that comes to take your house? You know, a few years ago they made they, these Gentiles are so cold, they, they made it hard to even get out of a bankruptcy. You got to pay to do that. It's just paper. It's just paper is going to burn. So, so, we have to be able to understand the signs of a time. We have to be able to understand the signs of a time. Look at Thessalonians. I'm not going to be long. I'm, the battery went out before, before I got here on the other thing. We're going to be ready to close right now. We're going to close right here in the book of Thessalonians uh, chapter. Uh, chapter, first chapter. Chapter 2. I mean, verse, I mean I'm sorry. 2 Thessalonians 2. And chapter 1. Second Thessalonians chapter one. Second Thessalonians chapter one. So the gospel is the only hope we have. The only hope we have. And Jesus came expressly to die upon the cross. Expressly. That's what he came for. Because God knows in all men's hearts. He knows all men's hearts. He came to die on the cross. Not only that. He came to establish his church. One, not two, not three, one. On the cross. And this gospel, if we don't obey it, if we don't obey it, then we're gonna we're gonna end up in damnation with the very people that keep us in bondage right now. How would you like to go to to end up in hell and you you on side you you you're on side you in hell with your children and with your wife and with your mother and your auntie in hell. How would you like that? Because you you could have been the one to obey it and teach all of them, so they would have an opportunity. You know how how would you like that? I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't want to leave my family anywhere that would harm them. But many people lie to their children. About any kind of holiday, you know, it's Christmas, it's the, it's the, the Lord's birthday. That's, that's not true. It's just not true. I don't know how to say it any nicer than that. It's you know, not true. It's not true. You know, truth hurts. You can lose friends with truth. Believe me, you can lose. You can lose a lot of friends with truth. Believe me. You know, the Lord said itself. Am I not your friend because I tell you the truth? So if you follow the Lord, you're gonna tell the truth because somebody been. See, somebody been lying to you all this time, now we got to break you up from the lie. It's just like a person been drinking all their life, and now we got to stop you from drinking because you got a habit. And that's a habit, to, to, like, to like to hear something smooth all the time. It's smooth. So, 
we're going to stop right here after we finish reading this. The Bible says in uh, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 7, To you who are troubled, rest with us. You know, I'm a little troubled sometimes. I get a little shook. You know, looking up all on YouTube and finding out all this dirt that's going on in the world. I get shook. And it troubles me. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished. The Bible said they're going to be punished with everlasting destruction. Everlasting destruction. That's what I mean. That means it don't never stop. And that's fire. From the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. The Bible says, when he shall come to, to, be, to be glorified in his saints and to admire in all them. He says, all of them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. He says, Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasures of his goodness and the works of faith with power. So I want to let you know right now, you don't have to miss the boat to get to heaven because there's still water on the earth. Still plenty of water to get baptized in. It's raining now. You know, maybe no one's here needs to be baptized, but maybe somebody on this this uh, 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 video or, or this uh, recording may want to understand that, you know, you can get baptized. All you have to do is realize that Jesus Christ died for you and I. And he died for all of us. I don't care if you're in Istanbul. I don't care if you're in China. I don't care if you're in North Korea. I don't care if you're in the uttermost parts of the earth. Jesus died for you. In your language, somewhere there, they can preach the same thing I can preach so you can understand. Because they did it at Pentecost. Peter pre said, Peter preached, and everybody there understood in their own language. So God can make a Bible and make somebody understand it somewhere you are. So therefore, if you believe that Jesus did that, if you believe it, it will bring about faith, as Romans 10 and 17 says. That faith come by hearing him by the word of God. And so therefore, that faith and belief will bring about a change in your heart, a repentance, a change. Just like the Ethiopian, Ethiopian eunuch did on his way from Jerusalem, going through the desert of Gaza, coming from worship, met Philip, and got baptized when he understood in water in the desert. And so therefore, before he got baptized, he said, hold up, what is hindering me? In verse 36, I believe it says that, he said, Philip said, well, you first, first of all, you got to confess. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then they both jumped off that chariot, and they both went down into the water. And Philip baptized him. Acts 2 and 38. Baptized, baptism is for remission of sins, and it also gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that is the Holy Spirit baptism that is baptized from heaven. Revelation 1 and 5. That's the one that the Lord baptizes you in. Because you need blood. No, nobody has his blood down here. He has his own blood. Dips you in that blood in heaven. So you can go get baptized anybody. Anywhere. But if the Lord is not baptizing his blood. It's void. Only three, bapti only three baptisms in the Bible. One with fire. That's the last one. That's when the Lord coming back. John's baptism is past. The baptism is valid now. It's the Holy Spirit baptism right now. Not only that, the Lord adds you, after you baptize, to his body daily. Which one? Romans 16, 16. Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Not the church of God. Because Christ purchased that one. Acts 20 and 28. He purchased that one. Only other one that ever existed. Only other one that ever existed. That's, that's just too plain. That's too plain. So today, you can have that opportunity if you, you would like. And... We'll baptize you at any time in water because there's plenty of water around this earth. Plenty of water around this earth. All you got to do is call the number and we'll come to your rescue. We'll even teach you more if you're willing. And so therefore, that is the lesson tonight. If any brother or sister need prayer at this time, uh, you can ask at this time. 
as we stand, we'll have a verse of a song. We'll get a brother to close us up, and we'll have a verse of a song this time. This life is filled with sorrow and trouble here below. We are from day to one day, that's why it should be so. In every condition to live with me. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we need a Savior upon this weary road. We need someone to guide us and share our heavy load. We need someone to love us and tell us what to do. And oh Lord, we need a friend like you. 